this is a, this is a, a video I'm doing uh, as a re request from UglyRhino.com um, to show how I line up the audio waveforms taken from uh, an external audio device uh, and line them up in post with my video footage. Right now what you're listening to is the onboard microphone from the Canon TTY, which you always want to record with so that you can use it as reference um, audio for um, this this audio. I just press record, hit the play pause button, so now it's recording. Um, I'm going to do a, a slap, um, something that can be seen on the camera but heard on both devices. So here we go. Okay, now I'm gonna walk away. Over here, I'm gonna be out of focus, but that's okay. So. Uh, here I am, I've got my Zoom H4n recording the audio, as well as the camera over there recording the audio. Uh, in fact, here's what it sounds like with, with just the camera. Obviously it sounds very terrible because I'm way over here. Now back to the H4n. So that's how you pretty much do that. Um, right now I'm actually using the H4n um, slightly out of frame, below my, my voice, right right here. Um, and I'm able to use it more or less like a shotgun mic or, you know, a, a close microphone um, as opposed to the onboard camera on the TTY. Um, I would use this at, in a pinch um, to do this, otherwise if I had it over here it would sound pretty bad. And over here, <laughs> obviously it sounds pretty bad, so. But, there it is. Um, hope this has helped you out to figure out how easy it is to, to line it up in post. Okay, um, here we are. I'm going to be um, um, showing you how to line up the audio uh, tracks um, taken from both the reference audio, which is from the Canon camera, as well as the H4n Zoom, Zoom H4n. So um, I'm just going to open up a project in Final Cut Pro, which I've already taken the, the time to already import things. Um, here are the video clips that I have from the Canon. Um, I always import because because editing in, in H.264 is incredibly um, in, intensive on your, your resources, I always import my, um, my video into MPEG Stream Clip and then export as uh, using Apple Intermediate Codec as the compression, which is basically lossless. Um, and it's so much easier on the resources. Um, so anyway, so I, I, I determine the ins and outs from, from that. So I've, I've already, I've already um, edited my my video files in, into two clips that I want to use, and, and I did the same thing with the audio. So from the H4n. So I'll go back here. I uh, will just drag them onto my timeline, and there they are. And now I will. Um, now this is. I've I've resized this so that you can see the audio better. Um, I usually have it more, where I don't see the audio much, but. And I'll take the H4 and Audio 1 and drag it down into my timeline. Now, obviously this doesn't line up right now because I, I started the recording of the H4N w a lot farther into the video clip. So I just happen to know that I think this right here is going to be the, the clap. And if I, sh if I show you right here, right here. This is heard the on both devices. So here we go. Yep. That's the clap. So, and I know this is going to be the clap over here, so I just have to line them up. And let's get a lot closer to it. You can get down to the nitty gritty. You can get really, really close to the waveform. And there it is. Um, so now we can try listening to that again. With the, but with both, um, both audio and, vi and video together. Devices, so here we go. Yep, okay. Now, if, for instance, if we got, there, there are occasions where you get down to the nitty gritty where you're looking at the actual waveform and down to the, the, the minutest scale, um, that they can be lined up perfectly visually, but they can still sound a little out of phase um, audi audibly. Always use your ears. 
don't always trust what goes on with the the, the um, video. Um, I, I personally haven't had very many. I haven't had that happen very often. Always use your ears. Always use your ears because uh, it's that's the best way to go. So now I take the second portion of the audio, and I've already lined that up from in in before in sand prep. So, but then I always just add um, a little fade. Um, to make it so it's, it's, it's a little nicer. Now, since since I'm going to be using both um, the, both the, the audio from the Canon camera as well as as from the H4n, um, I'm not going to delete this. But once you get them lined up, that's when that, that's when I normally would just delete delete these. But I'll mute them right now. Um, so let's listen to that with, with just the H4n. Yep, that's 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 doing good. Oops. So. That's that's how you do that. You line them up, um, and then when you when you've lined them up to the point where they're in sync, then you can either get rid of rid of rid of the um, the Canon um, reference audio, or you can you can just mute it. Um, but in my demonstration, I'm using both, so I'm not I'm not going to get rid of them. So, but that's how you do that. If um, I'm not sure what you're using for your non-linear editor, but the principles are all the same, um, and you can I'm sure there's a a way that to uh, to sync up your audio. So there it is. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and hope this has helped.